Hey, Robbie Lockman here with Harness, and today I want to take a look at Argo Flux or Argo, comma, Flux. Argo and Flux are two projects used to deploy into the Kubernetes ecosystem. They both follow a GitOps mantra. Now, here I have an EKS cluster, which is Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, with a cluster called Argo Flux. There's been a lot of buzz since last year around Argo Flux, as around KubeCon, uh, this is around November 2019 timeframe, uh, the projects seem to have a strong partnership. Now, if you're taking a look at it for the first time uh, in a serious note like I was, I thought the projects actually merged, but it seems like they're actually still two separate projects uh, that are partnering with each other. And so let's see if we can actually leverage Argo Flux or Argo or Comma Flux and maybe pick one and then do a comparison. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So reading some of the material looks like uh, the projects are partnering with each other, uh, but not sure if they're unified experience is still there so let's take a quick look so uh the intuit the blog post references get up engine or get pardon me get ops uh, engine uh not sure if this has been merged yet looks like some of the commits might be a few months a few months old so uh, that's okay we'll exclude that um so let's take a look at argo Let's maybe we'll want to leverage Argo CD. I'm guessing that's the one we want to take a look at. Declarative, continuous delivery for Kubernetes. Sure, let's use that one. And go to the complete documentation. Uh, maybe search for the word flux. Nothing. Um, we have the flux documentation here, which we got from the flux project. Um, similar approach, trying to search for the word Argo. Uh, nothing came up. Okay. So let's go ahead and decide. Let's just go ahead and use Argo CD um, as an example. I can't see a difference between, or Argo Flux, we'll have to decompose that, just Argo for now. I'll pick one, maybe a future uh, post we can use and just look at Flux. So what is Argo CD? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Install Argo CD. Okay, so the bottom one, I'll use kubectl, so let's go ahead and get started. And I'll have my commands here, so install, we'll create a namespace for Argo CD. I'll use the bottom one for kubectl command, so. Pull this install, Oop. It looks like We have a installation YAML. Uh, we can actually <laughs> take a look at what we're installing. Uh, let's take a look here where we really, really put something. <clears throat> Looks like we have a Helm chart. Is there any dependencies on this? Because eh. I don't have Helm installed on the cluster. I wonder if this is Helm v3. Let's check it out. Uh, okay. Did, was there any sort of prerequisites that I needed? So let's just let's do that. If there's any, any prereqs come up, um, they'll certainly contain for me. So let's just grab that. We'll go into namespace Argo CD. Go for gold. Cool. All right. On the gig started guide, documentation provided, additional features, for people interested in building third-party integrations, how it works, customized applications. Um, case on it, JSON it, plain, manifest, Argo CD automates, taking strategy for quick Argo or recent demo for the SIG apps. Architecture, um, let's see if we can use the UI. It's a good feature, so let's go back to getting started. So we don't have, G we don't have GKE, Argo CI. Okay, let's download the Argo CD CLI, so we can do that. I am using Homebrew, so these seem to be fair.
Just documenting all the steps. Okay. Update homebrew. Yeah, actually, before this, it's all the laser version of EKSCTL uh, to get uh, the cluster up and running. So hopefully the the <clears throat> brew upgrade doesn't take terribly long. Do, do, do. Cool, looks like that was pretty quick. Let's go install ROCD. All right, create the service load balancer. I proceed, I suppose. Well, let's go ahead and expose service. <clears throat> I'll use two windows. So service created, patched, login, use the CLI. So let's grab, so the initial password is auto-generated, so expose service. I forget how to get the, <laughs> the service IP. That'll be something that we have to Google uh, when when getting through this. But we'll go ahead and grab the auto-generated password. So Let's see, so I'll be password, PW. Use the username, adword, and password from above. Our IP or hostname, RACD. <laughs> what is the host name? Oh boy. Hey boy, oh boy, oh boy. Enter box time. What is the Argo CD server name? So. Argo CD EKS login. D 
deploy Argo CDS. <laughs> All right. Keep going. <laughs> what does it get bound to? Oh. <clears throat> you know what, instead of having change our city service to service type <clears throat> EKS load bum answer address. <laughs> I already have a service, <laughs> so it's the service is already created. We go back. Yep. So. All right. So to access the service, get service. Um, if it was a service that was created, so expose service. <clears throat> get service, get service, Argo CD. I wonder if I found it as a service. Oh, <laughs> give it the name. Oh, is it the namespace? I should get that. <laughs> okay, so we, we got somewhere. So external IP address. Sweet. All right. See if we can log in. Uh, 
the IP server. Sure. <laughs> That's good. Username would be admin. And then the password was the auto generate password. Argo C T. Cool. All right. My Argo C account update password. Sure. That's this. Share the current password. Okay. And it's your new password. Let's call this Ravi1234. Ravi1234. Cool. And so update password. Very secure. Robbie, what, two, three, four. Registry cluster to deploy apps to. Set virtual cluster credential Argus CD. Only set when you're deploying to an external cluster. Employing internally the same cluster that Argus is running in. Should be used. Uh, should be used as oh, the default service for desk. Cluster Docker for desktop. Create an application from a get repository. Let's see. So they have an ex example we can take a look at. Example apps, JSON it. It's like a straight up app template. We can just use customize, customize guestbook. Um, go to the UI. Let's see. Let's just get. To, let's just get to the UI. We can always pick this up in the morning. Uh, let's see. Um, I can go to this. So I can go. Anything? Nothing? Oh. That makes sense. So it's invalid because misconfigures proceed to it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so. Probably one, two, three, four. Cool. Uh, you know, out of the, out of Spinnaker, Jenkins X, and Argo, um, Argo was the simplest uh, to get up and running, at least to the UI. So this, this is great. So I think we can come back and uh, jump in. It's about 9.46 now. We'll start back in the morning. Okay, it's a little bit later in the evening. Uh, day full of meetings and uh, running some quality assurance stuff uh, that I was doing. But let's get back to Argo CD, not too undifferent than, <laughs> than your day. Uh, so I think it's time to create an application. So going back to the get started guide, let's, let's take a look where we were. So um, it looks like we're logged in already. Yeah, we, we did all the wiring steps. Um, okay, so there's kind of like two ways to do this. Uh, I was kind of poking around earlier today what one of the repositories looks like uh, just to get a better understanding of it. Um, create an application from a Git repository. So I think that's what we're going to do. So we can do it a couple ways. We can create it by the CLI um, or we can just go and do it by the UI. Which one? Which one? Well, I love UIs. So 
let's let's go ahead and make a, a new application. So let's take a look here. New application tab. Uh, we'll call it. We'll call it guestbook. Why are we? Yeah, let's just call it Argo test deploy. Uh, project yeah, going to be default. Yeah, let's see, not default. Default policy. <coughs> let's see, sync policy would be manual. Or maybe we could connect to a Git repository. Um, version would be head. What's the path? Is there one called Guestbook? <coughs> now let's take a look at the repository. No, there's not, there's not one. Which one to use? We can try to help Guestbook. Excuse me. Uh, actually, that might have some dependencies. You know what? Let's go ahead and use that yeah, you know, for the customized one just because I'm not sure what version of Helm it does it say what version nah well let's use customized because we don't have to install Helm or Tiller uh, into it give it the benefit of the doubt so let's use the customized get book I'm not case on it yeah come on mm, customize Destination will be the in cluster. Um, namespace will be default. <laughs> I'm just keep spelling default. Um, is there anything that I want to override? Unable to create Argo invalid meta. Argo is a. Oh, the subdomain must get sub. Lowercase. Oh, so lowercase no spaces. So. Um, Argo test. Actually, you know, this is called a guestbook. Okay. Oreo CD app. And so auto sync means it's not deployed. I guess it syncs. And there's a button. What should I do? Should you do the, the CLI or the UI? What does the UI do? Let's click sync apps. Um, is there like a run button? Is there a type of run I have to do? Let's see. Didn't really, didn't really specify what I had to do. No. You know what? Ugh, I'm just gonna try it. See what it, what it does. Ah, so is this complete? <clears throat> I wonder where this is. If I have to run, oh, that's sync. App, app get gets book. Maybe it will tell me what what I have in it. Let's see. So it says sync the head healthy. 
Okay, so it didn't it didn't say auto sync. Can I can I click on it? Ah. I don't like it's that UI though. Is it an app app div? What's the manifest? Mm. Oh, <laughs> this is the one when I get applied. Okay, is it? Is there another one? Oh, there it is. Okay. It's another. Oh, I was looking at. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell the filter there, but it looks like uh, different types of views here. Mine was kind of stacked up. This looks kind of cool, like a cool view. And just makes more sense to me though. The service and deployment. Oh, that's a replica set. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I just want to deploy. I wonder if I can just deploy like an image. Like, what? What do I have to do? Just to deploy an image here. Um. Let's. Take a look here. Okay, so we have the get started guide. Rock in. Take a look. Uh, let's see. Would that be operator manual? No, this. This would just be for, I guess, the installation. Um, we go back to overview. Okay, <laughs> runs through the guide. Uh, tools. Um. Okay, so I have to put it in a directory. Uh, if I go back. To my application details, or we'll go back to apps. This one. Oh, huh. I wonder why I guess it didn't show up in the picker. Uh, oh, let's see what that is. It's fun, yeah. Oh, we'll fire up GitHub for myself. GitHub. Let's make a new repository. This is called a <laughs> Argo test. And this is our Argo test repo. Now go ahead and give what I need. Is there a, is there a helm can ignore? No, nope. all right. Let's create that repo. <clears throat> Let's see here. So a directory of, well, I guess if I could use a root. Let's just look at like the Nginx, Kubernetes, Template or sample YAML. <laughs> Go searching here for these things. Let's see. Yeah, 
Yeah, this works fine, actually. Sometimes you find them and they're, they're the API is in beta. I've been working in Kubernetes years ago uh, before deployment was uh, GA to V1. You had to change some of that around. Uh, let's just make a new file. Let's call it index nginx.yaml. Excuse me. First. Cool. Let's see. Actually, I want to. What else have we got? There we can. There we can delete an app. Let's see. Audio CD. Now I'm jumping around. Let's get rid of this one. Um, so we can clean up. Cubes. Yeah, we got pawns. Yeah, we're running. Let's see. App delete. So, RDC delete app. Guestbook. Not sure what a cascading delete is, but maybe it'll take all the resources <laughs> that it needs with it. Uh, cascade. Did it? Yeah, well, killed the pod. That's good. Or killed the pods. Let's see here. So going back to our, going back to our goal here. So it needs the deployment YAML, I'm guessing. Yeah, and this is what we copied over to here. So let's go ahead and try deploying that. Let's call it Nginx. Let's go back to our default. Um, build us be this dot get. I think that's what I wanted. I hope. What was that? <laughs> what? what was that? Oh, I guess it's some sort of... Oh no! <laughs> I went into the... Oh, I probably had the edit as the animal selected and inject. That to the default. I should try to put that cat. Question name space. Default. Uh, can I create you? Yeah. Invalid spec. Do I need to give you dot get? Oh. <clears throat> oh man. How to create folders in GitHub. I always forget how to like. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and just copy this again. Just trash it. Adios. Adios. So if we click on add file, uh, we can say like nginx, nginx, okay, there we go. Oh, huh. we took extra stuff with it. Yeah, I'll we'll just copy it again from right here. Let's make sure we didn't pick anything up. Oops.
do you want to? I doubt there was taking a look at the quick start or the getting started guide. They're pretty explicit about saying dot git. Um, yeah, so maybe you'd say dot get. Same thing with <clears throat> got a UI, which it's no big deal. I could say dot get. I'm able to create applications in valid spec. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I don't know what that means. To the answer box, let's see. Um, let's say app, take out the word Nginx. Ah, this real, it's something just need. I have new to Argo, create a new project. Long YAML. Man, whoever LD Otimo is is like is like very persistent. This is great. Ah, okay. So the path needs to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's see if we we're able to to do that. Is it is it period? Ah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, this seems kind of strange. This is quick sync. Let's go for gold. Uh, let's take a look. Ah, looks like our deployments. I just went through. Um, that's really funky though. Ran right into this thing. Actually, this is good. Yeah, didn't you know that? Yeah, let's make sure. Good points. Yep, looks like that. That's there. Maybe we can do a quick delete. To leverage Argo, you know, you, you need to have a, a decent understanding of your Kubernetes deployment. I think it's a, a good job runner for that. This is kind of you know, <laughs> what, what I'm feeling here. Um, I know there's another project out there um, Th that it looks like there's a few ways to deploy. Uh, there's one called 
Argo rollout or Argo. I'm just gonna investigate, take a quick, a quick look here about rollouts. I know rollouts in theory are supposed to help with canary deployment. So, um, so I guess you have to be pushing it into a replica set. For getting started, guide. Yeah, this the documentation is consistent. Cube cuddle, have cube config. Yeah, sure, we all that. Uh, so it has to be, well, our, our version of EKS is 1.15, so next phase, we're going to roll that. Roll up YAML. Uh, looking at. This might be something I'm willing to try a little later, but I wonder what this looks like in the harness platform. So let's go ahead and just navigate to the harness platform, app.harness.io. I'll log in with my freemium account. So no installation, you just sign up. Get the OAuth provider to log in or several types of authentication. I have a few apps on here that I've been working on, but let's just take a look at this fake customer portal. <laughs> just delete that real quick. And let's go to Delegate. So first thing you need to do when you're leveraging Harness is just to install Harness Delegate. Uh, it doesn't look like we have one, so we can go ahead and uh, I'll call one called Ruby. Give it any sort of name. That's gonna download. It's gonna go to my downloads folder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move it um, from my downloads folder into another location really quickly. Yeah, let's do that off screen really quickly. So I have it uh, in Argo Flux. We'll just rename this. Um, this is all in the folder. Let's get some artwork. Let's go ahead and CD into it. So clear CD documents CD the Argo uh, CD harness. And let's just take a look at that. The command should be given there to us already. So we'll just like you call fire harness. So the delegate is a worker node and the worker node will be doing um, everything that we need. So let's go and create that. That should come up momentarily. In our text file, there's a few more little helper methods. <laughs> you know, we can take a look at um, the harness delegate uh, as it goes ahead and gets started up. So uh, that will get started in momentarily. Might take about 30 to 40 seconds for the delegate. So what a harness delegate uh, is, uh, it's a place where the your uh, work gets run. So for example, your delegate to make connections to the re your remote repositories, your artifact repositories, your LDAP, and actually can be calling infrastructure as code. Pretty fantastic stuff uh, that we do have here with the harness delegate. Boom, there it goes. The Ruby delegate's up and running. Uh, so the next step is we actually need to wire uh, the Kubernetes cluster uh, back in. So if we go to cloud providers, actually, I had one from a previous lab, so let's go ahead and delete that. Um, and a cloud provider, the oh, no, physical data center, a Kubernetes cluster, call it Kubernetes cluster. We're gonna inherit it from the delegate that's currently running. So the delegate will inherit all the details. Go ahead and hit test. Click submit, perfect. And so what we're doing here, we're actually interacting with our CD abstraction model. And so we're basically adding as a, as a uh, color wheel or color weasel, uh, what the pieces that we need. And so we can go ahead and create an application, which is the basis of it. So we'll just call this 
Argo. <laughs> Give it the same description, click setup. And so now we can start building uh, building what we need. So the, the first thing is we need, uh, let's go ahead and set up an environment uh, for ourselves. So let's say, want to make an environment, we'll just say that just Kubernetes cluster is our prod environment. And let's go ahead and call this prod. And so it's a production environment. Um, we're going to add the infrastructure definition uh, for K8 prod. Let's call it. It's a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, if we're going to be doing a Kubernetes based deployment. Pick our cloud provider, which we just wired up. Uh, default namespace is fine. Go ahead and click submit there. Uh, the next thing we need to do in Argo is just make a service. And so this is where some of the complexity. Um, of having to understand uh, if you're not completely on Kubernetes or you don't have the Kubernetes resources available to you, uh, this is where Harness really um, starts to pull away. So we're going to call the service into next. And it's going to be deployment types, it's going to be Kubernetes, click submit. So we're going to go ahead and add the artifact source. So all this is uh, built, built for us, the facade here. Um, just go straight to Docker Hub. We can just use library nginx. Go ahead and click submit on that one. We come back to Argo. The last thing we do is need to build a workflow. And so this is where the power of Harness is. So by using convention, uh, we can just call us our, you know, our prod workflow. No need to do it. We'll go ahead and just do a, eh, for now, let's go do a rolling deployment. Make all things equal. We're gonna go to prod. We're gonna deploy Nginx and to Kate's prod. Click submit, and that's pretty much it. We can go ahead and click deploy. Uh, let's look at a build version. It you know, pulls from Docker Hub what version we need. Uh, use the latest and go for gold. Notificational to me. And as simple as that, the harness deployment um, is getting deployed. Uh, everything is done via convention. You know, potentially uh, we could have done a canary deployment there also. It wouldn't have been too difficult to set up on the harness side, even helping wire in judgment calls. Uh, but uh, that didn't take too long to do in the harness platform. Um, kind of some closing thoughts uh, around Argo. You know, I think out of the couple I've compared closely, whether it be Spinner, Curve, Jenkins, and Argo, uh, Argo uh, what did, did install the easiest. I mean, Argo did come from a product company at one point uh, before or a consulting company before it was purchased by Intuit. So they really have that rigor there um, for, e for ease of use of getting it installed. Uh, it does, I would say, you would definitely need to have, I only scratched the surface with where some of the complexity in Argo lies is being in a GitOps model, uh, really have to be making sure that yeah, it, it seems like it's less stringent around some of the GitOps items, uh, such as you're forced to make a PR uh, or you're forced to have some sort of other SCM hook in there. Uh, I was actually able to grab a configuration, which I had to manage, which uh, is not, not too difficult because it didn't seem like it was too off the course um, or provide a chart or provide a customized file or customization and run that. It does require some expertise. Uh, you know, if we were to use another technology other than Kubernetes, for example, let's say if I want to go and add, you know, let's just say an, an EKS cluster or something like that, or pardon me, ECS cluster, uh, you know, that might be something that, uh, you know, wouldn't be supported uh, inside Argo. Uh, the harness platform, you know, we're kind of ubiquitous and what we deploy. But until then, uh, you know, definitely love for you to check harness out and thanks for your time and until next time cheers Robbie